Hello and welcome to Void Electronics. In today's video I would like to show you how I build this adjustable dummy load for audio amplifiers. So let's get started. A dummy load is just a fancy term for a power resistor. Its purpose is to load down an audio amplifier in order to test it at full volume in silent conditions and in order to have a nice and controlled impedance at its output. The dummy load that you see here has some extra features though. First of all it's adjustable so you can set it to 4 ohms, 8 ohms or 16 ohms. It also has two channels so you can test stereo amplifiers with it and it also has two outputs for the oscilloscope or other test equipment which can also be attenuated or directly connected to the input. On the back we have the inputs of two identical but completely isolated channels. We have two jacks which are usually useful for guitar amplifiers and you also have some lugs which are more general purpose if you will which are useful for connecting the dummy load using wires or jumper wires with banana jacks at the ends. Any good design process starts with some specifications, right? So the specifications for this project are the following. We want two channels completely isolated from one another. We want the resistance to be adjustable between 4, 8 and 16 ohms. We want jacks and lugs for the inputs. We want BNC outputs that can be either attenuated by minus 20 dB or not attenuated. We want it to be non-inductive and we want it to be able to take at least 50 watts per channel. Now it's time to design the circuit based on these specs. Now in order to achieve these three values my goal was to use only two resistors and reconfigure them using series and parallel combinations. So I decided to go with 8 ohm resistors and configure them as follows. For 4 ohms we obviously run them in parallel, for 8 ohms we only connect one of them and for 16 ohms we run them in series. And I thought it would be nice to have an open setting as well so we can disconnect all of them and basically disable the load. For the attenuator I decided to go with a simple resistive divider. It's nothing fancy, it's not frequency compensated but I think it's good enough for what I'm trying to do here. The basic plan is not to fry the oscilloscope while looking at the output of an amplifier and I thought it would be nice to be able to run the output of the amplifier into an audio interface. Maybe to characterize its frequency response or maybe just to listen to it and see if it's distorted or see how it sounds, maybe record it and so on. So we just have a 10k resistor and a 100 ohm resistor which should provide 40 dB attenuation which can be turned off using a switch and then the output for the oscilloscope goes directly to the amplifier input. And here's the schematic for the whole thing. As you can see every channel uses a dual rotary switch with four positions. Let's see how it works. For the open setting as you can see there is no path to ground from the input which means that we only have the attenuator connected to the input. So the amplifier will be loaded down with approximately 10k. Let's consider this an open. For the 16 ohm input we have a path to ground after the second resistor which runs the resistors in series giving us a total of 16 ohms. For the 8 ohm setting we have a path to ground from here meaning that only this resistor will be connected to the input which gives us 8 ohms. And for the 4 ohm setting we have a pass to ground from here once again but we also connect this resistor to the input using the other section of this switch. Meaning that we have the input here, ground here and the input here once again meaning that these two resistors are in parallel and we get a total of 4 ohms. And that's basically how it works. Now let's talk about part selection. For my power level the best resistors I could find were some Dale NH50s. They can each take 50 watts and they are non-inductive due to a really interesting winding pattern called Ayrton Perry. Needless to say you can use the same schematic for something that is much higher power and the largest resistors that I could find on Mouser for this would be some 8 ohm 2 kilowatt resistors. I guess those should be large enough for any sort of amplifier. To put everything together I decided to bolt the resistors to this heatsink which was removed from a non-working audio amplifier and then I bolted the heatsink onto this aluminium case. Of course the aluminium case has a slot 
cut into it so that the resistors have room inside and they are accessible to be connected to everything else. Apart from this, the interior is a complete mess of wires and that's because I wanted to finish this project within a weekend. And I succeeded at that, so I'm really happy with the result, even though the insides are not the most beautiful circuit that I've seen. Here's the final result. We have 4 ohms, 8 ohms, 16 ohms and an open, which is actually 10k due to the attenuator. So that's about it, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're interested in more content related to electronics and programming please subscribe to this channel because there is more content like this on the way. That's it for now, bye.